Okay, new player action, and th this man at the top needs no introduction, Rocky Mendez against Matt Pell, heavyweight clash from the new player's division. You can see Rocky's on 38 points, so he enters this match uh, as one of the front runners and favorites for a, to secure a playoff spot. Matt Pell at the bottom is on 30 points, so certainly within striking distance, particularly with a good win here, a good week here. As you can see, it looks like it's mono black against um, green black counters. Again, mono black a deck that I've been playing around with. But all the early running of Rocky here, you can see the, the powers out a big ballista to start. Awkwardly um, for Matt, he doesn't have that third black source for Dreadshade. Dreadshade, of course, one of the reasons to run mono black rather than to splash another color. Its equivalent is probably the, uh, I think it's called the Benelish Marshal, which is a triple white lord, which is why some people are playing mono white or trying to make it black white. But Jade Light Ranger in 8-7, you can see the, the gifted Aetherborn right there. Two of them now, uh, very early in the game, Matt's drawn all uh, his full playset. Uh, the awkward thing here is that this card has both lifelink and death touch. So as impressive as that 8-7 looks, it's going to get shot down, I believe. I mean, it's going to get shut down by Gifted Aetherborn. Rocky does have the option here of um, using the Ballista to shoot down the blocker, and especially with Pima Renegade, he's going to do that now. Put a counter on Ballista to remove the blocker. Then he's got 8, 10, 12, 12 damage coming across. And 11, actually more than that, 15, 16 damage. So Matt Powell down to 6, just like that. Bam. This is super awkward. He's seen enough. We're going to game 2. And we're going to see a similar start here from Matt. Turn to, um, and the same start from Rocky. Land up turn 1, Land of War Elves. Uh, and he's just going to take the aggressive route here of using the Ballista to remove the Elves, just simply to slow down the Mana Acceleration. But he is going to have a Khan, Sky and Aversa next turn. A uh, Rocky saw those things turn one, he's not interested. So Thrashing Brontodon is the play. Thrashing Brontodon is a feature of these green decks now because White uses Enchantment Removal. So it's a very good way to get around that. Oh, two very good cards revealed of Raska's Contempt and a Doomfall. So Rocky gives him the Doomfall. Now if he doesn't play a second creature, or he does, it's a whiny constrictor. I was going to say Doomfall was going to be very good. Golden Demise is going to be very bad on this game. I'm not going to see many 2-2s. He'll have a look at Khan first, I believe, just in case. Yeah, he, he, he reached for the Doomfall with the mouse. He's, he's gone back to it. He's teasing us. But he's going to get the Vraska's Contempt in the end. Um, I'm one, two, three, four, five mana. I'm not sure I really like that play. I mean, he, he's taking the aggressive line here to get the Constrictor off the board. Uh, Khan dies, unfortunately, for Khan. He does have a backup one. It is going to force uh, Rocky to commit a turn to getting Khan off the board. And I think Rocky just botched something there because no Rishka counters went anywhere. Uh, they're just discussing rollbacks. Is there a rollback switched on? Rocky has declined the option. He says he doesn't have rollbacks in league. Um, yeah... So what's the play here? He's going to go... Yeah, he can actually Golden Demise to get rid of one and then Doomfall to get rid of the other. So that's going to be punishing for the... Uh, that's going to be punishing for Rocky. Those counters crucial there. And so you see now the follow-up's a Ballista, which would have been a three-power Ballista. Um... As Kabul Stronghold doing serious work here. 
That's going to get Blister off the battlefield. The Stronghold's going to enable him to play Doomfall. Oh, actually, he could have played Doomfall on Khan anyway. But it's going to leave two mana open just in case. You can see Matt's out of, Matt is out of cards, but Khan is going to be a beast when it comes to generating card advantage. Yeah, Rocky just saying it's, that's doing some work. And just as I say that, card advantage gone. But here's the reason to play mono black. It's a dread shade, and that thing is going to be massive next turn. You can see Rocky only one card in hand. Two cards in hand. One of them, though, is a Chupacabra, which will take down the dread shade. Chupacabra, a very nice card. As Matt in trouble now. Top just decking lands at the moment. Two, two cards in hand, one card in hand for Rocky, lands again, on the bright side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine swamps, he's going to be able to make a massive blister if he can find one, fatal push, he can't get the ravenous chupacabra because there's no um, revolt triggered, he's two turn clock now, <laughs> more swamps, this is just a disaster from Matt's side, he's going to be well, he's got one more turn. He can actually fatal push. Okay, Khan's going to find him something. A ballista would be awesome here. I didn't actually... We didn't get to see what the two options were. There must have been two swamps, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, okay. I can see from the uh, transcript it's two swamps. Okay, so he's got a turn. So what do you do if you're Rocky? Do you go at the face or do you go at Khan? You go at the face. I, I like that. So now he's got a top deck of Ballista, basically. And he does. <laughs> that's how That's how it's done. Uh, so Matt Powell's shown us how to play the mono black. Again, Khan gets him a... And this Ballista is just going to be absurdly huge. And this is, this is where mono black... Uh, this is one of the payoffs. So he's got 12 floating, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12 plus 9 is 21, so he can cast a 10-10 Ballista here. He will clear that board. <laughs> well, a fatal push, but it, it is going to get the board clear. And then seven at the face is going to rock knock you, uh, knock Rocky down to fifteen. Rocky though's got three cards in hand, so we'll see what he's got. He didn't actually play anything the last turn, so my guess is it's all creature removal. Some sort of weird interaction there because. Um, because he's got too many lands, Khan disappeared off the board, it was too wide, but now Khan is mysteriously back. So, advantage uh, Matt Powell here, because he's going to start generating cards through Khan. He's, <laughs> he's going to get the Ballista back. He's going to play it as a 10-10 again, but you've got to float that mana first. Yep. Okay, so Rocky's got three cards in hand. He's going to have to... This is going to knock him down to five. He, he needs to find a kill spell, quick smart. So you can see here the Khan's disappeared again. Khan is off the, to the side. And we're going to game three. Walking Ballista gets the job done. Well, high risk, high reward here. You can see Dreadshade is turn 4 at the earliest. He's got removal of Fatal Push. But he needs help top decking lands. No turn 1 Llanowar Elves this time. The turn 2 Gifted Aetherborn option is still on. Duress is going to find... What do you take? Probably Khan to be safe. Yep, Khan down. And Gifted Aetherborn, because he draws a Swamp for the turn. But Rocky down to three cards. Well, 
waste no time getting it off the board. He still has one more fatal push in hand. Yeah, I think it's got to go on that. And here comes Dreadshade. This is the match winner if it's not answered. You can see a sorcery in a creature, so he's in the business for pumping this thing up here. And straight away, that's what he does. Becomes a 7 7. Two turn clock with the Dread Shade. Here's a Jade, Jade Light Ranger, is going to find him some cards, but it's only found one. Makes him a 3 2, so he's going to be able to remove that with Battle for the Bridge. Battle at the Bridge, sorry. He's tapped wrong, has he? No. What's he doing? Oh, okay, yep. He's going to go Ballista for one. I, th I think I would have taken the aggressive line there with the Dreadshade, because you know the shields are down. Get in an extra two points of damage. Chupacabra is going to take down the Dreadshade. That's timely. Tops of land, he's going to find Demon Lord Belzenlock. Let's see if he can find the land. He does. So we're going to see this new card. It's a new mythic. That finds a battle at the bridge. This demon lord is a... Uh, and there's a chupacabra. Okay. I was going to say it's got flying and trample, but we're not going to see it do its thing this game. Now, he could have actually done this for two more and gained a bit more life. That's not going to work, that fatal push. Revolt has to be on your side, not on the opponent's side. <laughs> He's just checking the rules. Says, whoops, in, in chat. Yeah. Um, even so, he could have pumped the Battle of the Bridge two more and got an extra two life points out of that. Uh, fatal push just to get rid of Ballista quickly. Rocky's at 8, but you can see that Matt's out of cards. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay, so he gets the counters right this time, and he's got lethal... Oh, no, 17. Oh, okay, so I was looking at the wrong life total. The beatdowns are coming, 5, 6, 7... Okay, if, if Etherborn will stem that tide somewhat. I think if I'm a Rocky here, I just swing the Chupacabra. Trade. Or even better, swing a Chupacabra and Alana War Elves. Or even better, swing the whole team. And I would have taken... If I got Death Touch, I would have traded with the Constrictor there, I think. But no, this is game over, so we're going to Modern. Rocky takes standard two games to one. And you can see Matt's Modern deck here. It's uh, Soul Sisters. I did uh, preview this, show the cards for this, uh, I believe, last week or the week before. Basically, it's Soul Warden and Soul's Attendant. That gives plus one each time a creature enters the battlefield. And you just try and swamp them with life gain. And then get some get some flyers. So you can see he's got the Ar Archangel Thun. Or Toon, or however you say it. That Ar Archangel puts a plus one counter on every creature every time you gain life, I think it is. Rocky looks like he's on the Hollow One deck. A Faithless leading a Street Wraith from a Blood Crypt. This terrible, terrible um, quality of recording here is... is um, from the source. It's um, Matt Powell's recording. It's not my side. As we've got a Gurmog Angler, but you can look at Matt there. He's got two Path to Exiles in hand, so plenty of options. And Path to Exile, very good for that bird. The bird's a damn nuisance. It won't go away. Now, he, he can't play... Oroic Champion's got protection from red and from black. 
and it gets a life every time uh, a creature comes in so it's going to check the Gurmag angler the angler can't do anything now and that's actually a perfect card against Rocky's deck because Rocky has absolutely no way of getting rid of that three path to exiles so you can say he probably wants to path the bird yeah in the hollow one here you don't worry about the Gomo Gangler and you'd imagine sideboarding uh, Matt Powell's probably got rest in peace quite a number of them being in mono white they'll be coming in But uh, this match is far from over, as I just quickly post something. Okay, sorry about that. I was um, had to quickly. I've got quite a few of these to do today, so I'm trying to juggle many things at once. Collective brutality will take down the soul soul warden, but those two flyers in the air are very awkward to deal with. And I like that attack there from Rocky. Down comes a hollow one and that's lethal on board we're going to game two yeah I'm, I'm not really sure what's happened to this recording quality here but keeping in mind here this is week six so there's three weeks to go after this uh Matt Powell lost to Rocky in standard so um, Rocky's trying here to or oh, Flame Blade Adept's gonna get a pump Rocky's trying to extend his lead so if, if he can get a good result against Matt Powell in this match then you'd he'd have to be seriously uh, looking at uh, finals now Flame Blade Adept is down to the path to exile and for all that um, huffing and puffing from Goblin Laws and Faithless Lootings, nothing to show for it. And a Path to Exile. So once Elspeth Knight's Errant comes down, he can just, uh, Matt will be able to plus that and make a creature each turn. That's an aggressive Path to Exile. He's doing that so that he can play the, the Elspeth next turn. He's going to gain, oh, I was going to say he's going to gain a life each turn, but that's gone now. Collective Brutality will remove the second Soul Warden. And he's also looking to take a card, but he's, he's going to see the, the Elspeth there. Well, Arawak Champion will uh, combo with the Elspeth as well. Not this turn, obviously, but next turn it's going to start coming down. And then that's going to combo with um, Archangel of Thune, because Arch Archangel of Thune, every time you gain life, put a plus one counter on each creature. That's going to be a beast. So the Archangel is actually his uh, win con here. As you can see, Rocky down to one card. He's very aggressively digging through that deck trying to find something. <laughs> yeah, you can look at this weird um, weird board layout from Matt. The, the, uh, the Planeswalkers, for some reason, just get buried way down there. We can't really see them, so he's had to... It's, I think it's something to do with the what do you call it, um, resolution or the, the settings that he's using. Archangel here. 
and I think we're going to see a concession pretty soon if he doesn't have a removal spell yet he's going to concede so we're going to game three the decider Oriok champion we saw he had this uh, Matt Powell had this in his main board it's a massive problem for there's a rest in peace he'll quickly snaffle that under the wind brisk heights yeah Matt Powell is playing this in his main deck And I think, I was going to say, I think two Oroch champions is too much for Rocky to beat. Uh, a flyer can get around them, but you can see there a spectral procession is going to get him a ton of life. Take the Elspeth this time. I think he's got to attack with three to get the trigger for that. Here's Gurmag Angler, the big, big beast that's utterly useless on this board. Still that two, the little two-two that could is chipping away, but just not going to get there, I don't believe. Play out two Soul Wardens. You can see here, he's going to play that Selfless Spirit after this, and he, he's going to be getting four life per creature that enters the battlefield. The only thing I can think of here that is some sort of board swipe on Rocky's side. I don't know if the, his deck plays it or not. There is one that occasionally sees modern play called Flaying Tendrils, which is colorless. So it would actually get around the Ariok champion and take her down. What's he going to fatal push here? I think you've got to fatal push the selfless spirit first. Oh, you, you've got a soul warden, okay. You can see that that Flame Wake Phoenix has been getting in every turn, and um, Matt Powell's life is at 27. So he can actually get the rest, if he swings here, he can get the rest in peace. I don't know why you swing the Soul Attendant. And I don't know why Rocky didn't block that Soul Warden. Oh yeah, okay, sorry, he did, yep. He's going to get the knight. I would have got the rest in peace there. Two more life coming. I think he can actually activate... He could, he could have act activated both Windbrisk Kites here. I'm not sure why he didn't. Rocky's seen enough. He can't beat this life gain. So we're going to Legacy. And it's Mono Red Prison here for Matt this time. This is a very popular deck uh, currently in our leagues. And he's up against lands. So lands, I see it every week. Um, it's pretty standard what it's trying to do. Now what's he going to name here? I think... I don't know if he can name Thespian Stage because... Yeah, he's going to name Mox Diamond because Phyrexian Revoker, unlike Pithy Needle, cannot name lands. But Blood Moon is going to be huge on this board. And he's one away from that. I don't think Chalice has anything to do on this board. Okay, so you can see the path to victory here. Rocky's missing land drops. It's dropped the Blood Moon, dropped the Rebel Master, game over. But Trinosphere's going to come out here, I'd suspect. So quite a bit of changes will happen sideboard. There's the mountains, there's the Blood Moon. I don't think uh, Rocky can beat this game one. He can't, so we're going to game two. Oh, he's got Leyline and Avoid. I'd keep this one for sure. Keep. Yes, Leyline's going to be in the opening hand. That's going to mark up the... Graveyard shenanigans from Rocky. But <laughs> Mana Bond's going to wreck that plan. You can see he's got... I think you get rid of Fiery Confluence here. Yep. 
Uh, Magus and Blood Moon are going to be absolute beasts here, but can he get them out in time? I don't think so. This game two looks like it's going to go to. Yeah, I, I would cast a Chalice for zero here. Looks like there's some sort of there's some sort of weird interaction going on here. When he's tapping the Mox, it's adding three mana every time. So you can see he had six mana floating. That that looks like a uh, bug. And credit to both these players, they they um, what's the word sensibly played around it. You're obviously not going to tap the six mana. That would just be blatant cheating. Okay, here's the, the Chalice for one. I like this. I oh, for zero. Sorry. You can see the Mox is making it again. Uh, Rocky just needs one land here and this one's over. We're going to game three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rocky makes a comment in chat. Man, I wish this lands deck would draw lands. Like, I, I don't know the exact number of lands this has, but it's absurd you can't find one land in a lands deck. He finds a one and it's over. You can see Matt's missed a whole heap of land drops. He needs one more to drop his. Oh, and it's a tap. It's a tapped land. So if he can get his land here, he's going to win. He doesn't get the land, so Matt pa uh, Rocky will win. So Rocky's going to take game two. There's a land, but it's too late. We're going to see Merit Lage now. Because if there's been stage in response, if he had it one turn earlier, then it would have been good. There's the 2020. And this one is over. Unless he, unless he gets an ensnaring bridge. And ensnaring bridge is the only thing that can save him here. If he doesn't, we're going to game three. Yeah, this one's turn two Blood Moon. You take this for sure. Now you got. Uh, if he doesn't, I was gonna say if he doesn't play a green land, you got him here, and this is gonna. I, well, Mox enters. He's gonna go the creature route first. He can't life from the loam because he doesn't have a green source. Plays it through the mox. Okay, so the mox is giving him his green source. He's got another mox. Phyrexian Revoker here will do it. And here's a Rebel Master. So he's, he's got a clock now. I don't, I don't know how the lands player gets out of this. He does have the gr access to the green. So my, my only... My guess is he he has to have some sort of enchantment removal here. He saw Blood Moon game two. Oh, sorry, he needs creature removal. He didn't play the Blood Moon, of course. Tabernacle's not going to work because of Blood Moon. Down will come Sin Prodder. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar enough with the lands deck to know how that can actually beat this deck now. I mean, obviously it must have enchantment removal in it. That's the only thing I can think of. There's lethal on board next turn. We're going to see a concession in a second. And in some very entertaining matches, Matt Powell's going to come back and take Legacy two games to one. And Rocky... Uh, we'll have to wait a little bit longer to jump to the head of the queue for the new players league. I think he's just seen if it's possible.
Yeah, I think, and it, yeah, so Matt takes it nine points to six.